Praise the Lord, everybody. Could we stand tonight? Thank you so much for joining us this evening. We're so uh, grateful that you've taken some time this Sunday evening to spend in the house of the Lord with us. Uh, and we are coming with expectation, believing God's going to do something special. Do we believe that tonight? Why don't we start this service in prayer? Thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity to be in your presence tonight. I pray that you would move in this place like never before. Help our hearts and our minds. Prepare us, oh God, for what you want to do in this place tonight. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone said amen. Would you give the Lord a hand clap of praise one more time as we begin worship? The child that mocked the living God by faith he stood in power when that giant had to fall and the Israelite people were rivaled by a wall but when the people shouted that wall it had to fall there is a sound Oh, 
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. If you're able to stand at this time, we want to go before the Lord in prayer. So thankful for that freedom we have an opportunity to experience in this place tonight. And uh, this is when we say release the sound and we talk about speaking the name of Jesus. This isn't a weird kind of mysticism that we're referring to. We believe that there is all power in heaven and earth in the name of Jesus when spoken in faith. We believe that tonight. And we're excited for what God's going to do in this place. We do want to remember several needs. Uh, continue to remember Sister Niece. Also, Sister Bev is in the hospital, I believe, battling uh, pneumonia as well. Uh, Brother, Brother Milam is sick uh, tonight. We want to remember him. Um, every special unspoken. I know we have so many needs here tonight. We want to go before a living God. Amen. Let's go before him tonight. Thank you, Jesus, for what we already feel in this place. Lord, we approach your, th your throne, God, boldly in faith, believing that every need which is brought before your throne is heard from heaven. We ask right now, Lord, every healing that needs to take place. Lord, every addiction that needs broken. Lord, every ounce of despair that needs cast out. We come before you tonight believing, God, that you have all power in heaven and earth. And we thank you in advance for all that you've done and all you're going to do here tonight. We come with expectation in our heart. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. If you believe that tonight, clap your hands unto the King of Kings and Lord of Lords here tonight you can be seated in Jesus name as our ushers make their way we do want to remind you it missed the bulletin but our in time life group will be this uh, Thursday if you have any questions please see brother or sister Banks in that regard and also uh, Saturday the 22nd the youth are going to Kings Island uh, please see Sister uh, Tasha, Sister Crystal with any questions regarding that. Let's ask the Lord to bless this offering. Thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity to give to your kingdom. We pray that you would bless it, multiply it, help it to reach this lost world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
looking forward to that day. Anybody in this place excited for the day we get to see Jesus? Hallelujah! Amen. I don't know about you, but heaven's real to me. So you can be quiet if you want to, but when I think about that day, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more sickness. Anybody excited for heaven in this place tonight? When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing. What a day of rejoicing that will be. Amen, amen, amen. I want to invite you to stand at this time. We're going to prepare for the word of the Lord again. Thank you so much for all those who are visiting. We hope uh, you've enjoyed the service thus far. We hope you feel uh, the presence of the Lord in this place tonight. And we're just so excited as we finish up our Ohio District Camp Meeting uh, this Sunday. The district unified together to make this a special outpouring Sunday. So we're believing that God, like always, is showing up here tonight and will meet us in this place. He's faithful even when we're not. God is always faithful. And tonight we're so excited, honored to have now... Pastor Vinny Azzalini with us tonight. And so he's one of our favorite evangelists. And, and um, I'm just going to tell you right now, the church in Ironton's going to have to share you with us every, every now and then. <laughs> Why don't we give him a, a Middletown welcome as he comes and preaches the word? Amen. Come on. Can we give that hand clap to the Lord? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My Lord, I, I pulled in and I thought, well, I'm going to have to park out, out there. Because your parking lot's full, Pastor. Parking lot is full. My car's in the grass because the parking lot's full. I think that's something worth getting excited about. Parking lot's full. What's that mean? That means you're having revival. That means you're having revival. That means every declaration of faith, every prophetic word, everything that's been spoken here for years, you're beginning to see it happen right now. Right now, your parking lot can't hold. Amen. This isn't what I'm preaching to you, but I just I want to read this verse to you tonight because I feel in the Holy Ghost there's people here right now. I'm going to reach for your attention. I want you to hear this. 1 Kings 18 verse 21 says, and Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? And we live in a very opinionated culture. Some people got more than two opinions. Some people got multiple choice opinions. But let me tell you something, there is nothing more liberating, nothing more empowering than taking all of your opinions and putting them on an altar before God and saying, God, I'm done following my opinion. I'm done getting stuck in a place where I can't decide how I want to live or who I want to serve. So, God, I'm going to choose you. I'm going to choose to follow after you. I'm going to choose to obey your word. I'm going to choose uh, to be a part of your church. I'm going to choose uh, to be a born-again, spirit-filled, Jesus-name believer. Somebody told me living for God is hard. I said, false. I said, no, living for yourself is hard. 
living for the world is hard because you'll let yourself down and the world will let you down, but God will never let you down. You turn the word of the Lord with me tonight to the book of Isaiah, excuse me, the book of Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, and then we will also read Isaiah 55, verses 6 through 12, Acts 2, 1 through 4, and Isaiah 55, 6 through 12. I'll read Acts to you, and then we'll, we'll pray, and I'll let you be seated, because I have a lengthier reading on that second portion. Somebody say thank you. Did y'all have good church here this morning? You got a little left for tonight? It's been a good day so far, Brother Tyler. I was with one of your neighboring pastors this morning in Cincinnati with Brother Ellis. We had seven people receive the gift of the Holy Ghost this morning. Amen. Then I drove two and a half hours to Ironton, got there for our afternoon service. We had two people get the Holy Ghost this afternoon in Ironton. Two people were baptized in the only saving name of Jesus. Mm, hallelujah. Man, I feel explosive revival here. That's why I love coming here. Pastor Heidelberg, every time I come here, I feel explosive revival. I feel like these walls are just going to fall down because they're just going to bust out because they can't hold what God is doing here. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 2, beginning with verse 1, if you have it, say amen. Anybody ever read this passage before? Amen. Well, if you haven't, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, Somebody say fully come. How many of you know that timing is important to God? They were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound. Let me tell you something. Anywhere God is doing something, there will always be sound. That's why it's so important that you lift your voice. That you worship, that you respond, that you clap your hands, that you stomp your feet. What is that? Is that emotionalism? No, you're making a sound. Because when there's a sound, the spirit reverberates and the atmosphere reacts and God begins to move. There was a sound in Genesis before God moved. God will move in response to a sound. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all. Somebody say all. Filled all the house. That means we can't have this side making a sound and this side being silent. It means the front half can't make a sound and the back half go to sleep. Mm. That means from the left to the right, from the front to the back, we need to all make a sound. To release a sound into the atmosphere. That, oh, come on. Somebody needs to let heaven know huh, that you came expecting a miracle. Huh, that you came expecting a breakthrough. Huh, that you came expecting a deliverance tonight. Hey. Filled all the house where they were sitting. There appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all, look at your neighbor, say all. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. I heard another pastor say it this way. I'd never heard anybody use this word uh, as a synonym for utterance, but it made perfect sense to me said, as the Spirit gave them the ability. 
See, utterance isn't a word that we use very often, but before we leave here tonight, there's people in this room right now who have never spoken in tongues before, but in just a few minutes, uh, the Holy Ghost is going to be poured out in this sanctuary, and you're going to feel a new ability come on you to begin to speak uh, with other tongues uh, as God empowers you to do so. Well, is it that important? Yeah, it's that important. As a matter of fact, Jesus said in red letters in your Bible, in John 3 and 5, when he was talking to a religious person, he was talking to somebody who loved him but was not ready to be with him in glory. Mm, Don't be scared to talk to religious people that don't know everything you know or have not experienced everything that you have experienced. I saw a Baptist deacon's wife two weeks ago sit in her living room. As my wife laid hands on her and began to pray with her, tears streamed down her face. And she said, I've never felt what I feel in this living room right now. She said, I've never felt this kind of power. I've never felt this kind of joy. Jesus told Nicodemus, unless a man is born of the water, that's baptism in Jesus' name. And unless he's born of the Spirit, that's the infilling of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Jesus said, He he can not enter into the kingdom of God. You know what cannot means? It means cannot. It means access denied. It means that a lot of the stuff you hear out there, where if you'll just confess with your mouth and accept the Lord cheating, let me tell you something. The reason people believe that kind of doctrine uh, is because they have not read this book for themselves. Uh, when the when Paul said in Romans chapter 10, uh, you need to believe and receive. Uh, when he said you need to confess with your mouth, uh, he was talking to a room uh, full of Jews uh, who had never believed that Jesus was God. Uh, they believed they crucified a man. Uh, they did not believe uh, that he was the mighty God in Christ. They had not believed that Jesus is God. And when he talked to him, he said, first thing you got to do is you've got to believe that Jesus is God. And if you can believe that, then you shall. That's future tense. That's not right now. That's not it's complete. You shall be saved because belief will always lead you into salvation. Jesus, uh, Peter preached that same message in Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost. And we're going to circle back to it here in just a minute. Y'all been standing long enough? I think it feels good to stand. I've been driving for like seven hours today. Praise God. All right, let's pray together. Jesus, we love you. Lord, we're so thankful to be in your house today with your people. Lord, I'm thankful for the hunger that I feel in this room right now. God, I'm thankful for the expectation and the faith, Lord, that I can witness with my spirit in this room. Lord, I pray right now you would release the operation of the gift of faith. Bring us into one mind and one accord. And before we leave here tonight, Pour out of your spirit upon all flesh. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. 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 Give the Lord a great big hand clap. Shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. Come on. Why don't you take the next 15, 20 seconds and give God the greatest praise you've given him all night long. Come on, some of you should jump. Somebody ought to run. Somebody ought to just decide right now, I'm going to give God my...
Praise God. You may be seated. Isaiah 55, beginning with verse 6, reads this way. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Immediately the scripture indicates to us that there will be a time where he may not be found. Mm. Call ye upon him while he is near. You need to recognize when you have an opportunity from God. When you feel the Holy Ghost moving on you, it is signaling to you that he is near. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way. Oh, you mean I got to change? Yeah, you got to change. That's right. God didn't save you so you could remain a heathen. But he saved you to become one of his kids. When Jesus saves you, everything about you is going to change. You're going to talk different. You're going to walk different. You're going to... You're going to worship different. You're going to praise different. You're going to look different. You're going to... Ah, your attitude is going to be different. Everything about you is going to change. Mm, hallelujah. Ah. And the unrighteous man, his thoughts, even your thinking is going to change. And let him return unto the Lord. Ah. You know, every time somebody is saved, they are returning unto the Lord, even if they've never been in church before. You know why? Because you are returning to his original plan in the garden. <laughs> because he created you to have relationship with him. When you are baptized in his name and filled with his spirit, you are returning to the Father, the creator, who gave you life. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. What does that mean? That means you ain't going to understand everything that happens in your life. Uh, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, somebody say the rain, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. Hear it. It shall not return unto me void. What's that mean? That means every word in this book is true. Every promise is going to come to pass. Every time God has spoken to you, every time you've received a word from the Lord, that word is producing something in your life. It never produces nothing. It always produces something. And not just anything, not just something, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. When God gives you a word, it comes with a purpose, and it's going to do exactly what it's purpose to do. Mm. Ah. For ye shall go out with joy, sounds good, and be led forth with peace. Mm. Ah. You know, man, you got you to gotta hear this. You shall be led forth with peace. So many of us live our lives in a way where we wreck it and we got to reach behind us to get peace to bring it up to where we are. But when we are led forth with peace, we're not constantly recycling peace in our life and having to make up for things that we've done. Why? Be led forth with peace, the mountains and the hills. Some, somebody say the mountains and the hills. Shall break forth before you into singing. If you won't make a sound, 
nature will make a sound. Mm. And all of the trees of the field shall clap their hands. How many of you love Brother Tyler? Man, I heard a big amen from the front row. I don't know what's happening over here, but praise God. Amen. When was the last time I was here? January? Yeah, yeah. I may have mentioned this to you in January, but I want to recap it just very briefly for anybody who didn't hear it then. In Eureka, California, I feel like God gives me so many messages when I'm there. Have you heard me talk about that place a lot? Yeah. I was there last December, and something was happening in that region. And not only in Eureka, but all across the state of California, they began to experience record-breaking rainfall. Did anybody hear about this? It made national news multiple times. And it's been raining in California like it's not rained there in decades. It's refilling reservoirs that they predicted would take 100 years to refill. Rivers are gaining their depth again. And, and the, there's no forest fires this year. Did you guys notice that? No fires in California. Why? Because of record-breaking rainfall. They interviewed a meteorologist and they asked him on national news, they said, what is the cause of all this rainfall? Anybody heard this before? He said, they're being caused by a phenomenon called atmospheric rivers. Ah, I'm a little excited. The meteorologist said this. He said, atmospheric rivers are, and I'm quoting, long, narrow regions in the atmosphere like rivers in the sky. Atmospheric rivers are rare. However, they are increasing in frequency and intensity. I don't know what you believe, but I believe that what happens in the natural is a mirror of what is happening in the spirit world. Mm -hmm. And in your Bible, in the book of Joel 2.28, the prophet prophesied, and in Acts 2.17, it declares again that it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. All flesh. What does that mean? That means there's no exclusions. There's no omissions. Before that trumpet sounds, there's going to be an outpouring of the Holy Ghost all across our world. Ah. Just a little over a month ago on a Thursday night in Maslin, Ohio, we laid to rest a prophet of the Lord. His name was Bishop Harold Strange. Anybody know him? Bishop Strange, as he was laying on his deathbed, looked at Pastor Nick Strange and told him, he said, the Lord has given me one last prophecy. And he smiled. If you knew him, you would understand this reference. He just had a big smile on his face. And he said, and it's a good one. And he looked at Pastor Nick and he said, the clouds are full of rain. <laughs> How many of you believe in climate change? Everyone was like, nah, what's the right answer? I don't know. 
I believe in climate change, Pastor. Uh, I didn't used to believe in it, but I'm a believer now. Uh, because ever since I started reading and studying these atmospheric rivers I thought you know what the climate is changing the atmosphere is shifting something is happening that cannot be explained by man you know what it is there is a spiritual climate that is shifting right now why because the clock of eternity is ticking down to a day where the trumpet of the Lord is going to sound and he's going to call his children home. But before it does, that climate's going to change and atmospheric rivers are going to begin to move into your city. In March of 2020, anybody remember 2020? Longest 50 years of our life. In March of 2020, I preached to a camera for the first time in my life in an empty sanctuary in my home church. As I stepped to that pulpit that day, the Lord gave me a word to preach that I'd never preached before and I've never preached since. And I didn't know that it was going to be a prophetic word. But now three years later, the Lord is allowing me to see that word come to fruition. I preached out of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 6 and 7. It says, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, and neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. As our entire globe came to a screeching halt, the Lord told me, he said, tell my people, it's time to water. And I began to preach on the ministry of Apollos. And I told them through a camera. I said, every person you've ever invited, every invitation you've ever given, every text message you've ever sent, every letter you've ever written, I said, I want you to begin to water the seeds that you have sown. 2 Corinthians 9 and 6 says, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Uh, listen to me, friends. Uh, I have had the distinct privilege and honor uh, of traveling all around uh, this great district of Ohio. Uh, I've preached for probably more than half uh, of our United Pentecostal churches uh, right here in Ohio so I'm somebody who knows what they're talking about when I tell you that the churches in this district have sowed a Abundantly, Every city I go to, I can feel it. There's seed in the ground. The field has been plowed. The laborers have been active. They aren't idle fields, but there's been laborers that have been toiling for years. Sowing, 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 rightly dividing the word of truth. Sowing the good seed, Scattering it uh, everywhere they go. How many of you have ever felt that after all your labor, after all your toil, after all your effort, that that seed did not yield what you expected it to yield? Come on, you need to be honest. Come on, how many of you, you, you spent the money, you spent the time, you spent the energy, you prayed the prayers, you fasted the meals, you made the sacrifice, you stayed up late, you got up early, and yet the seed just seems to stare and mock at you and say, look, it was all for nothing.
I'm going to back up just a little bit further than three years ago. Seven years ago, using this text in Isaiah that I read to you tonight, a man by the name of Nathaniel Urshan preached a message in Little Rock, Arkansas called Sometimes It's Like the Snow. I went back and listened to that message a few months ago. And the essence of that message was this. That sometimes when you scatter the seed, the Bible says in Isaiah that sometimes it's like the snow. You ever, does anybody know about snow? You ever had it snow and then, you know, it seems like in December it snows and then it melts. Sometimes January we get a little lucky and then February comes and it can snow one time and you're staring at that same snowfall for a month. It's not fresh, it's become ugly after a month. He said, sometimes it's like the snow. Sometimes you cast that seed and it just sits there doing nothing. It just rests on top of the ground. Looking at you, mocking you. <laughs> but let me tell you what happens. Over the process of time, the sun comes out and the ground freezes and thaws and freezes and thaws. And that seed begins to work its way down into the soil. Where it stays perfectly preserved until the conditions are right for germination. I was on a Zoom call with I think just over a hundred different nations were on this call. On a Monday afternoon, Brother Charles Robinette was leading that call. And a pastor from Ohio had a prophetic word to share on that call. He wasn't the main speaker on that call. He just had a word to share. And a pastor that you probably never heard of from a city you probably never heard of got on a call. With over a hundred nations represented, tens of thousands of people tune into this call. And he said, The Lord showed me something. He said, I was watching the news, and they begin to talk about atmospheric rivers in California. Do you know what's happening in California right now? All across the mountains. And hills of California. There is a phenomenon going on right now called super bloom. Has anybody heard of this? There are billions. How are we ever going to have a latter day harvest? There's 10 billion people on this planet, Tyler. And the Bible says two are plowing and one is taken and the other left. Two are walking, one is taken and the other left. Two ladies are together working, one is taken and the other left. What does that mean? That's a biblical precedent for a five billion. Not one amen. Not one amen. A five billion soul revival. It's in your Bible. Whether you want to believe it or not. And I know what you're like, well, I, I, I can't understand that. That's right, you can't. Because your ways are not his ways. And your thoughts are not his thoughts. Oh, how much greater are his thoughts than your thoughts. And his ways than your ways. That's right, it's a harvest. You can't quantify. You can't qualify it. You can't plan for it. You can't program it. You can't process it. It's only something God can do and all across the mountains and hills of California there are billions of flowers in bloom right now you look it up not now 
later. Billions of blooms are covering the mountains and hills of California. And this is what the meteorologist said. He said the seeds have been laying there for decades. He said they've been in the ground for decades. But now for the first time, the climate is right. The conditions are right. And because of atmospheric rivers in the sky, beyond billions of blooms are blossoming all across the hills and mountains of California. Hey, what are you trying to say, Vinny? Let me tell it to you like this. There are hundreds of thousands of seeds in your city that the devil tried to convince you uh, have gone to waste. Uh, he tried to make you believe uh, that they did not produce, uh, that they were not going to yield, uh, that they were not going to bear fruit. Uh, but God said, wait, uh, there's an atmosphere change. Uh, there's a climate change uh, in the spirit uh, and the conditions uh, are lining up uh, for the greatest outpouring uh, of the Holy Ghost that the world has ever seen. I've come to preach to you tonight, Pastor Heidelberg. Brother Tyler, it's the season of super bloom. I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus. It is the season of super bloom here in Middletown, Ohio. There is an atmospheric river that is moving into your city. Yea, says the Lord, on this very night, the atmosphere, the spiritual climate is changing in this region beginning tonight. You've sowed, you've watered. Now, God is going to give the increase. I said, God is going to give the increase. We've sowed abundantly. We're going to reap abundantly. There might be 50% in this room that believe what I'm saying. Maybe. Let me talk to the 50% that want to believe it but aren't sure if you believe it. If that was you, listen to me. Part of the reason you do not believe it is one, you've heard it before. And two, you're exhausted. Did you know that exhaustion is the enemy's plan for his final latter day attack on the saints of the Most High God? Why did he save exhaustion for last? Because he knew there would never be a time where we needed more laborers than right at the end. The book of Daniel says he seeks to wear out the saints of the most high God. Let me tell you something. You ain't just tired because you're busy. You're busy because the enemy is trying to wear you out. He wants you exhausted. He wants you tired. He wants you checked out. He wants you unplugged. He wants your praise to be gone. He wants your shout on the pillow. He wants your expectation of sleep. He wants your belief to dwindle. He wants to wear you out. Wow. 
He wants harvest ready fields with no sickles. Uh, He wants a harvest that is ready with the combine in the barn. He wants a city that's ready for harvest, but a church that needs to go to sleep. I believe in 2020, God was trying to set the reset button in your life and warn the church, hey, you better recenter your priorities. You better recenter your focus. You better budget your energy. You better get your eyes back on the prize. You better get your vision back in alignment. You better alter your expectation and get it in line with the word of God because the season is getting ready to change uh, and you cannot be too busy uh, weary uh, and exhausted uh, when the rain comes what's Galatians 6 9 says be not weary Being weary is a choice. You decide how you fill up your life. We made it. We made a choice in our home a long time ago. We're not giving God our leftovers anymore. Mm. If I'm going to be tired, I'm going to be tired after the labor, not before the labor. I'll let the labor wear me out. I'm not going to let the world wring me out. I'm going to save my best for Jesus. I'm going to save my best for the harvest. Be not weary in well-doing, for in due season, in due season, You shall reap if you faint not. You can miss a harvest because of weariness and exhaustion. You've got to decide, I'm not going to be weary and I'm not going to faint because the time is too important. you got to know when it's due season, Brother Tyler. You don't have to raise your hand for this question. It's rhetorical. Anybody ever been late on a bill before? That company is more than willing to let you know it's due season. All of a sudden they're calling, texting, emailing. You got more mail than you've ever gotten in your life. Why? Because it's due season. Heaven's trying to get your attention, church. Mm, This ain't any season. It's due season right now. So you better shake yourself and wake yourself and recognize the season that you have stepped into. It's due season. Where I live in Columbus, every Wednesday at noon, we have a siren that goes off. Does that happen here? Same day? Same time? Every Wednesday at noon. When's the last time you heard that siren? Well, they've been preaching about revival for years, Pastor. They've been preaching the latter rain for years. Oh, yeah, that's exciting, but it's just Wednesday at noon. That's for the future. That's for when the uh, clock. That siren is only for when the tornado shows up. That siren's only for when the climate changes. That. That siren is only for for when ever when the atmosphere reacts. <laughs> I've heard that siren before, 
so I can just tune it out. Remember when I asked you, when's the last time you heard the siren? You're like, well, must have been Wednesday at noon. But did I hear it? Or has my mind been trained to just tune it out? Now that siren's just background noise. Now when the preacher preaches about harvest and revival, it's just background noise. When the preacher says it's time, that's just background noise. That's just the, that's just the Wednesday alarm going off at noontime. It's just, it's just a drill. It's not for real. I'm here to shake you tonight and tell you you better pay attention because it's not a drill. It's not Wednesday at noon. The alarm is going off and the heavenlies have shifted uh, and the season has changed uh, in the last days uh, that's what it is uh, we have moved into the last days uh, and this book says in the last days uh, saith God uh, I will uh, pour out uh, of my spirit uh, upon all flesh I'm here to sound the alarm uh, there's an image of the super bloom. You can look it up later. I wish I had a button where I could turn off everybody's cellular service during church. But after church, look up the super bloom, and you will be able to find a satellite image from space that you can see the super bloom because it's so big. From space, you can see the colors covering the mountains and the hills. It's going to be a revival so big that you won't be able to hide it. You won't be able to hold it. You won't be able to cover it. It's not going to blend into society. It's going to turn your city upside down. It's going to be a revival so big. It may, you thought Asbury was something? Asbury was barely a blip on the radar compared to what God is getting ready to do. God was just saying, here's a taste. Here's just a little taste of what is getting ready to happen. That was God saying, hello, this is is not a test. This is not a drill. This is getting ready to happen everywhere. See, we become so comfortable flying under the radar. You know, tonight, while we're in here having revival, everybody out there has no clue what we're doing in here. That is not the kind of revival you're going to have. You're going to have the kind of revival that you can not hide. You are going to have the kind of revival where people come from far and wide because they can't stop hearing about it. Everybody's talking about it. Everybody's taking pictures of it. Everybody's posting about it. It's going to be a city wide, north to south, east to west. Your complete region and territory revival. It's going to be in parking lots. It's going to be in buildings that you have to rent out. There's going to be arenas that are completely full as God fills 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 people with the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Ah, it's going to happen. They were all all filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. In the last day, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Mm. Ah. 
It's not the season of about to be. It's the season of it is. It's the season of right now. It's the season of super bloom for the church. How long will you halt between two opinions? Well, I want to live for God, but I, I, I want to come here and feel Him, but I don't want to change. I, I want to come here and have a Pentecostal experience, but I want to make my own rules. I, I, I want to come here and feel the power of God, but I, I want to cherry pick the word of God and choose uh, what I believe and what I obey. Uh, let me tell you something right now. Uh, this is a life uh, transforming uh, salvation. Uh, it is from the top of your head uh, to the soles of your feet, uh, inside and outside, uh, your family, uh, your friends, uh, your household, uh, everything around you, uh, your environment changes uh, when revival uh, comes come on would you stand let me tell you when true revival starts true revival starts when the church repents If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Does anybody know the next one? And turn from their wicked ways. Then, then will I hear from heaven and will heal their land. Let me tell you something. Butler County, it needs healing. Middletown, it needs healing. The greater Cincinnati area, it needs healing. It doesn't need a closed off, walled off, covered up, uh, camoed out church uh, that you can't find and doesn't even make a dent uh, in the city. It needs a church uh, that will turn their city upside down. Down. Give me Acts chapter 2, beginning with verse 36. Y'all tell me when it's on the screen. Is it there yet? All right. Is it there yet? I can't hear you. That's the kind of boldness you need to get about this gospel. I heard one person whisper, it's there. You want to know why you're not turning your city upside down yet? It's because you got boldness in the closet because the world convinced you That you got to present this gospel with cupcakes and sugar and a cherry on top. No, my friend, you don't. You must present it with love, but you must present it fully. You must present it with love, but you must present it boldly. You must present it with love, but you must present it accurately. You ought not be afraid of what this book says. Jesus wasn't scared to tell Nicodemus. Priscilla and Aquila were not afraid to witness and say, let me show you the way more perfectly. Why are you saying that? Because you need to understand the revivals that are in your city right now. Right now in your city there's a religious revival do you understand what that means does any does everybody here know that there is only one church and that the church not churches the church was born right here 
in the book of Acts, chapter 1 and chapter 2, when the promise that Jesus gave to his disciples was poured out in an upper room, and they were baptized and filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost as the Spirit gave them utterance. There is only one church. In the last several weeks, I have witnessed to Catholics, to Baptists, to Methodists, to Presbyterians, and to Charismatics. And you need to hear this preacher today. I take authority and dominion over the fear and the intimidation you felt when I called out those religions in this room. And I'm going to tell you why. Because you don't need to be afraid. Because you have the truth. And when the truth is presented in love and in the timing of Almighty God, it will season. It will be the salt that that it's intended to be. Right now in this state, there are Methodist churches calling United Pentecostal Church pastors and ministers and literally handing them the keys and saying will you please come and preach to our church will you be our pastor literally this morning I heard another testimony of a Methodist church calling one of our people and saying will you come and pastor our church why Because it's real. Because in the church, people are healed of cancer. In the church, people get out of wheelchairs. In the church, blind eyes are opened. In the church, the deaf hear. In the church, people are delivered from methamphetamines and fentanyl and cocaine and heroin. And they are forever and completely changed. That's what happens in the church. I had a lady tell me, she said, well, you know, we just, we're all going to the same place. And I said, we're all trying to go to the same place. I said, but Jesus corrected that very mentality in his word when he was challenged with it. And he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. He said, broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be that go there. But few there be that follow the road that is narrow to salvation and eternal life with him. Peter was challenging religious people in the book of Acts chapter 2. Give me verse 36. He said, therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom you crucified both Lord and Christ. He called that room of Jews a bunch of murderers. He said, you crucified the living God when you put Jesus on that cross. Why did he preach it that way? Because he knew there would have to be a change in their thinking, a change in their doctrine in order for them to be saved he didn't beat around the bush he said this is how it is Jesus is God he is the mighty God in Christ he is God incarnate he is God all by himself he is God in the flesh he is the lamb slain from the foundation of the world he is the lion of Judah he is the rose of Sharon he is everything you This was important. Why? Because they had to believe to be saved. They had to humble themselves and say, maybe 
I got something wrong. Maybe I don't know everything that I thought I knew. Maybe, just maybe, there's something in my belief system that has deceived me that is not right. And And when they believed it, they asked. And when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. Woo! You know what that is? Remember we read, respond to him when he's near? The moment you feel that in your heart, that tug on your emotion, that is your moment of surrender or defiance. That is the moment you choose. Am I going to listen and surrender to what I'm hearing? Or am I putting the walls up and I'm going to shut out what I'm hearing? How long will you halt between two opinions? And when they heard this, they were pricked to their heart and said unto Peter, the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? This needs to be your response. Every time God sends somebody with a word to speak to you and challenge where you're living and challenge what you're believing. Oh, that's not comfortable. Of course it's not comfortable. It's cutting away at your opinions and your pride and your tradition and your religion and your flesh. That's what it's supposed to do. It's challenging you right where you are. What shall we do? He said, repent. What does that mean? It means, God, I give you my opinions. I give you all of my opinions. God, I thought I knew what I was doing. I thought I had it all together. I I thought I had it figured out. But God, it seems to me, based on what I've heard tonight, that something, I might have got some bad information. I might have learned something incorrectly. So God, tonight I'm giving you all of my opinions. Done living for myself and for my own validation. And God, I'm ready to turn and live for you. He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. And you, 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 Zach, you, come on, Zach, you. Come on, it happened, didn't it, Zach? We had to try a few times, but it happened, didn't it, Zach? Why? Because his word will not return. Boy, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. In Ironton, Ohio. We've had 17 people receive the gift of the Holy Ghost since the first week of May. We had a lady last week receive the Holy Ghost. She said, I've been coming to church here for years. She said, I just couldn't decide if it was real or not. She said, but for the past month, I've been asking God, God, if it's real, if it's real, Give it to me. And as I was praying for somebody else beside her, nobody was praying with her. She had her hands up all by herself. She lifted her head and she just began to magnify God. And instantly she began to speak with other tongues as God filled her with the gift of His Spirit. I'm going to ask the keyboard player to come. In this room tonight, there are people who need the Holy Ghost. In this people tonight, in this room tonight, you need to hear this preacher. On my way here, an evangelist to this church, he preached for in Ironton for us today, Brother Shad Holly, texted me. He said, God is going to give you a very specific word when you get there. 
And God brought that verse to my mind about halting between two opinions. And in this room right now, there are not one, not two, but there are multiple people that are stuck between opinions right now in this room. And you are trying to decide, where am I going to live? Am I going to continue to live in conflict? Or am I going to take a step of faith and believe what the preacher has preached here tonight? The reason some of you have not had victory in areas of your life that you wanted so desperately is because you have stayed halted between two opinions. You've stayed in a place where you demand to have control over certain areas of your life and you only give God control over the areas that you feel comfortable about. Do you know what I say when I baptize somebody? We baptize a little boy today who's eight years old. Him and his sister got the Holy Ghost at camp meeting this week. And I baptized a 70-something year old today. The mother of a man who goes to our church in Iowa who's never experienced baptism or the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Three generations, young, middle-aged, old, separated by one generation. I baptized somebody that was young, sometimes then somebody that was older than me. But I said the same thing to both. Because let me tell you what happens when you're baptized. I said, upon the confession of your faith, what is that? That's us saying we believe in the oneness of God. We believe that Jesus is God. That's what Romans 10 is. That's what Acts 2.36 is. Upon the confession of your faith and your willingness to identify with Him in the death, the burial, and the resurrection, I now baptize you in Jesus name the death is repentance it's where you take a step of faith and say God I'm going to give you everything and then when we bury you in baptism that's where all that stuff is supposed to stay but you know what I've learned we got a lot of grave diggers in the church and they go back to where they're buried after they experience resurrection. And they say, you know, I just, I'm not sure I want to leave, leave that opinion there. I, I'm not sure I want to leave that there. I, I really enjoyed that. I think I want that back. And so they go back to the site of their burial. <laughs> and they say, I'm, I'm going to just take that with me. I mean, I, I experienced the resurrection. I'll just keep this over here. In the resurrection over here. How long will you halt between two opinions? He's a fulfillment of the law. Everything in this book applies. It's for your life. And God is dealing with hearts in this room right now. If you are ready to give everything to God tonight. Now listen. If you know that you've been holding areas of your life on reserve. But you want to give everything to God tonight. I challenge you. I challenge you in the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Respond while he is near. Because he is near here tonight. And he is walking by looking for a responder. Is there somebody who's been halting, who's in the valley of decision, that's ready to come to this altar right now and give me everything? 
everything. What does that mean? It means everything. Uh, what, what about my anger? Yeah, everything. What about my opinions? Yes, everything. What about the things I disagree with pastor about? Yeah, everything. What about the offenses that I've been harboring against the church? Yes, everything. How long will you halt between two opinions? Is there anybody in this room tonight? Come on, don't do it for me. Do it for you. You're ready to give God everything. You're ready to remove the boundaries and say, God, I didn't understand it before. I wasn't sure about it. But God, I want to give you everything, God. Uh, God, these thoughts that I replay in my mind uh, over and over, they've had me stuck here for years. Uh, but God, I'm ready uh, to give you everything, God. God, these disappointments, uh, uh, these frustrations, uh, God, this anger. God, I got ought uh, against spiritual authority. I got offense against the church God I got all this resentment in my spirit and I'm angry at my parents God there's things I don't understand how long will you halt between two opinions come on if you're ready to give it all to God I want to invite you to this altar here tonight come on come on Come on, eternity is on the line for somebody. Uh, let me tell you what I know in the Holy Ghost. You go ahead and keep praying. Uh, but there are people in this room right now uh, that are being stubborn with God uh, because there's things in your life uh, that you know uh, God wants you to change. Uh, and you're resisting. Uh, and you're resisting. Uh, and you're resisting. Uh, I'm telling you in the Holy Ghost, uh, give Him all.
Let the fire flow, the wind blow. Let your glory come.